Hi, I'm Amy Northard, the Account Report Creatives, and today we're going to walk through together how to set up payroll for your child if you have a family management company. You'll start by going to gusto.com and you'll want to create an account. All right, so then you'll get an, e an email to verify your email address. All right, who is your company planning to pay? Employees in the U.S. Are you currently run payroll? We are new to it. We've never ran payroll before. All right. We want to make sure that the address matches the articles of organization. In this case, it's where you want things to be mailed. So if your registered agent on your LLC is set up to be UPS mailbox, um, but you want the mail sent to your home, you can use your home address. All right, so <clears throat> you're going to tell them if your company is registered as an employer with the IRS. And when you set up your EIN number, there was a question asking if you're going to be paying employees through payroll. And you should have marked yes to that question. Um, so when they issued your EIN letter, which I will pull up an example of, here's an example of the EIN letter and you can confirm that you signed up to be an employer for that's paying payroll by seeing these forms. It might say 940, and it might say 941, but you know it's these 900 series forms um, that are related to payroll, and that's kind of your indicator that you told the IRS you will be paying employees from that EIN. So we'll mark yes. Do you have a company bank account? Yes, we do. Have you already hired the employee? Yes, it's our child. Share your federal tax information. I will get that filled in. We'll type that EIN number and then select LLC. What is the legal name of your company? And then we had 944 on our EIN letter. So um, you'll want to make sure whichever one shows up on there that you choose. He's going to be paid very, you know, little in the scheme of things, so he qualified for the annual form, which is the 944. Um, what industry are you in? All right, so for this, we'll actually do individual and family services. What address does the IRS have for your company? So you'll want to look at that. EIN letter again just to see what address you put on there and if it's the same as your mailing address you'll select that if it's not enter in the additional address tell us about your accountant so here I am you know obviously the accountant I will probably link this account to our accountant account in that way I can have all of our clients in one place and can easily hop into it. But for you, working with an accountant, you'll want to add them so that they can help out if you get notices or help set up your Gusto account if you decide that you don't want to do it yourself. Health benefits. So since it's the family management company set up, we will not have health benefits for the employee. And we will not be contributing to health coverage because we already have that covered through a regular health insurance. Um, our desired first payday with Gusto. Let's do, we'll just do October 1st, 2024. So we've got the basics. Now uh, they're gonna walk us through the rest of the information that we need to complete. After you give them your login credentials, you enter that into this plaid data entry, then it will show you all the accounts that you have at that bank and you'll select the business account. So make sure you select the correct one when you're in there and then it will connect them and then you'll just hit save. So now the account is verified, we can continue to the next step. We don't really need any of these things just because we have a very simple payroll needs. So I've selected none of the above. If we run into any issues, we can we'll do chat. We only have one state. If you did happen to have kids in multiple states, you know, obviously you would want to check two or more states, but it will increase the rate that you pay for Gusto. Um, so this is showing you what your plan options are based on 
your selection. So you can get the lowest option as long as you only have payroll in one state. And we don't need any of the other bells and whistles for this, so that's the one we're going to go with. Two-day direct deposit is good enough. We only have the one employee, so we'll go ahead and do that. For job title, um, you can kind of make this up based on what your child's going to be doing. He will be kind of like an office assistant. You will be paid by the hour. And now for the amount paid, we I'll link some resources that we have on the blog for determining this, but essentially it needs to be the market rate that you would hire someone else to do the work that your child's going to be doing. So, you know, as an office assistant, it's going to be cleaning, um, stuffing envelopes around the holidays, things like that. Um, you know, what is the going rate? So it, I would say it's about $15 an hour, but you want to research, save your documentation of what you're finding that is similar so that if the IRS were to ever question the rate, you have that to back it up and it's not just something that you made up. Default hours worked per pay period. Um, we'll probably do like a monthly paycheck for him. So I would imagine It'll be five hours or less. Here's where you want to be, where you will select that they are a family employee. And this is how you get the special tax exemptions for the FICA, the FUDA. Um, that's what you want to make sure that you select that. And then we will have a company time off policy for this position. So here's some onboarding documents. We'll have to help him e-sign. Now he has been invited to get onboarded. So we've added all of the current employees. Next, we'll set up a pay schedule. Like I said earlier, I think I'd like him to just be paid once a month. So here's where you can do that. We'll select monthly and we'll do the 15th of the month. And his first paycheck, October 15th. So again, if you want to edit that pay schedule, this is where you'll do that. We don't already have accounts for the Department of Revenue and Department of Workforce Development. You will want to set those up, even though no withholdings will be paid in. Uh, you'll still need Gusto to prepare and file those related payroll tax forms for you and send them in. So um, they give you instructions on how to do that. There's this like starter rate for unemployment that they'll use, so you can just go with that. And then when you get those account IDs, you will be able to come back into Gusto and enter those so that when it's time for Gusto to file those payroll tax forms at the end of your first quarter, they'll be able to file them without any issues. We won't be doing R&D tax credit for this situation, and then you as the parent are authorized to sign government forms for the company. So then there will be two forms to electronically sign. Now you've completed that step and you'll work, move over to workers' compensation. Uh, this varies by from state to state, so you'll want to check and see if your state requires children of the owner to have workers' compensation coverage, or if they're exempt. The case for being exempt is that it's your child and they most likely would not sue you if they were to get hurt on the job. But there are definitely some states that still require it, so you will want to check with your state. This little tool here kind of gets you started to see what the employee minimum is for having or workers' comp. So for Indiana and most states, it's one. But some of the higher ones, if you are if you only have the one child, you would be uh, exempt in those cases. In our case, we don't currently have a policy, so we'll select that. And then here's where you can use Gusto's partner, which is Next Insurance, to set up a policy that's connected right with your payroll. We use this for the firm and it is super handy just to have it kind of automated with payroll. Um, so if you want to do that, you can set up a new policy. I will handle it later once I look into Indiana's requirements. 
So once you complete those steps, you can see now um, Gusto is going to review the account. It'll take about two business days if they have any issues come up, which typically involves like an EIN not matching what the IRS system is showing on their end, then they'll let you know if they need additional information. Um, or they'll just let you know if you're ready to start using their payroll. This is your dashboard. You can, you know, complete some of these things. These are kind of your tasks. Uh, this is not an S corporation, so we'll select that and save it. And then we can mark that off. It'll remind you that you still need to get workers comp. If you find out that you are exempt, then you can contact Gusto support to let them know you need that um, turned off or marked exempt on their end. And then here is where once you have that Indiana withholding account set up and your, well, whatever your state withholding, if you have withholding, and then um, I believe all the states are going to have unemployment accounts. So this is where you'll go to enter those numbers. Here is that temporary rate, but they will, when you set up your state unemployment tax account, they will give you your actual rate. So you'll update that once you set up your account. Um, and then the taxpayer identification number, they're all called a little bit different things from state to state, but if your state has withholding, that's gonna be the ID number that you'll wanna enter. Uh, they do have the option to use one of their partners to take care of those registrations for you for a fee. Um, so you can do that. They also have kind of the DIY help center option that walks you through where you need to go, how to fill out the forms uh, to get those set up. And then this says payroll is blocked, team member details are missing. So that email got sent out to the child. We as parents will help him fill it out. And that will be asking questions like his personal bank account where the paycheck will get deposited and his social security number for his W-2 at the end of the year, those sorts of things. When you click on the link from the employee email, it'll bring you to this page where you will set up a password for the employee account. So it's telling the different things that you need for your child. Um, home address, social security number, um, tax withholding information, and bank account. All right, I wanted to let you know that I contacted Gusto Support. They were very quick at getting me an answer about the date of birth. So if your child is under the age of 13, what they said is you'll need to adjust their birth date on this form so that it is at least 13 or older. And then you need to send them a copy of this parental consent form. You'll just need to message support at gusto.com. Let them know that you are employing your under 13 child. They will send you all these instructions and what to do, but they'll send you this form. You'll sign it, scan it in, put it, put a copy in the employees or your child's uh, document area, and I'll show you where to do that. And then you'll send it back to the Gusto support person. There and they will update the age to be the correct age. So here is kind of the next step. Once you get beyond that, you will want to select that they are exempt from withholding. And I don't see that same option for the state side, but when you run the first payroll, you can see if it's withholding state taxes. And if it is, then you can come here and add some exemptions to this so that it zeroes out. So we'll look at that. Do zero for now. Um, we will be doing a direct deposit, but if you want to pay your child with a paper check, that is an option. When you're adding in the child's bank account, make sure that you don't add in the family management company's bank account. Uh, you'll get an error. So make sure that it's actually a bank account under your child's social security number that you're putting in there. Then once you submit that, you will come to this page and you can sign for your child since you are their custodian. Once you've set that up, then they'll ask for a photo ID, which we'll skip for now as well. And then you're all done. Uh, so this is going to take you to 
this screen over on the employer side, you will basically review their answers and complete the onboarding of your child. Now we're back over at the employer page. Here is where you will review your child's onboarding information. Action needed, so we'll verify information. Um, so here's where it's asking about special tax exemptions. So here, Social Security, Federal Unemployment, Medicare. We are also going to have the local tax because he won't have any state withholdings. We'll mark exempt for the local tax and then for the state unemployment tax, we will also mark that as exempt. Uh, there will be a question about filing a new hire report, so go ahead and have them file that for you. It's like they need an occupational code. To find that, you can click on this link which will open up the page. And um, we'll just do office assistant and see what that brings up. Okay, so the code is 439061. And there's the direct deposit information. And that's all. You're just reviewing to make sure those things are correct. And now he's set up as an employee. So again, we still need to get the state withholding number and state unemployment number, but those will go over once you have them in, in taxes and compliances and then tax setup. And here's where, you're, where you'll enter those. There will also be that link from the dashboard, which will navigate you here as well once you have them. And you just need to have them in here by the time that they're going to be filing these forms. So his first payroll will happen in October. The forms are quarterly, so we need to have it done by the year end when they start making the quarterly forms and year end forms. But I will go ahead and recommend that you start that process as quick as possible because sometimes some states take a little bit longer than others. So that's the process. It's a little lengthy and it's a little complicated for children, especially if they're under the age of 13. You can follow these steps, reach out to Gusto Support if you run into any issues. They are really great. That's why we love working with them. Then you can start paying your child. Thank you.